Uh, welcome to my talk. Um, my name is Thorsten Liebig and I want to talk to bo uh, today about uh, OpenEMS and uh, most importantly, of course, um, what it is, actually, because I'm not sure if uh, you are familiar with it or not. Let's see if this works. Doesn't look like it. Um, okay, so here's the outline of the talk. So I will start talking about what it actually is. Um, a little bit about the interfacing, because that is, I guess, most important for the most uh, people in this room. Um, and then I will give a short um, status and outlook. So what is OpenEMS? So OpenEMS is a um, free solver, of course, um, for electric magnetic fields. So you have magnetic fields, electric fields, and what you can do with that is you can simulate um, RF devices. For example, uh, antennas or filters, transmission lines, everything like this also radar cross-sections of devices, even up to optical devices. So if you have a, an optical device, um, you can also do that. Everything that's pretty much electromagnetic um, is possible. Um, OpenEMS uses the FTTD method, um, which stands for finite differences in time domain, because if you look at the Maxwell equations, it's pretty much only derivatives uh, in time and in space. And what you can do is you can just uh, model this into a computer using finite differences. And if you do it one time step after another, then you have these finite differences in time domain, and that's what this method is. I'm not going to uh, go into more details about this method. There's lots of information out there. It's re actually a very basic or very fundamental method, which is well known for, I don't know, 50 years already. Um, yeah. OpenMS uses um, an Octave or MATLAB um, interface, so you have a scripting interface which is, can be very low level, so you can do very basic stuff with it, or it has a lot of functions that are very high level, I will show this in a moment. Um, that is the interface. Um, there's also a Python interface, but w which one is very young yet, so it's not complete, and unfortunately also only for Linux at this time. Um, so Linux and Windows are fully supported, except for the Python interface yet. Um, what's also important, I think, is that the user has a full control over the simulation. That's not available, for example, in a lot of other tools uh, that you can really control everything about the simulation. And what I find very important, and the most users find very important, it has a lot of tutorials and examples, so you can have a look. Maybe this antenna, I take it, and take it as a baseline for what I want to do. It always helps a lot, I think. Here's a very long list about a few features. I won't go into every um, aspect, which is important. This first one, maybe it's in Cartesian and cylindrical coordinates, um, fully three-dimensional. So I think cylindrical coordinates, FTTD, I think this is the only tool available at all, commercially or free. Um, but of course, 99% of the people are only interested in Cartesian coordinates. But the cylindrical coordinates are actually the reason why it exists in the first place, because I, when I wanted to do what I wanted to do, I needed to do it in cylindrical coordinates, and there was none. So I had to do this, and that's the reason why it exists in the first place. Um, you can create models uh, with cubes, cylinders, polygons, and other primitives if you want to, but you can also import uh, other CRD data, mostly in uh, STL format, for example, for three-dimensional models. You can have SMD lumped elements like resistors, capacitors, can include it already in the simulation. Um, there's a small circuit simulator included as a pi uh, octave, pretty much uh, functionality, very basic. Um, but you can also export a touchstone and include it in your favorite circuit simulator if you want to. Um, it has support for um, human body models. Again, that's wh what I needed at the time. Um, you can have dispersive materials, which means frequency dependent materials to some extent. You can have a look at all the fields in time domain and at certain frequencies if you dump them onto your disk, which you have to be careful to not fill it in no time. Um, you can do remote simulation, so you can set up your simulation on your computer and send the uh, working task over the internet to wherever you want to to get the results back later, um, which is also very nice. What would a typical script uh, working script look like. Usually you have some header with some constants and everything. You have your FTTD setup part. What pulse do I want to set up uh, for excitation? And what is the boundary conditions? Then you, you talk about the CRD model. So I import some structure or I define it myself using the interface. Um, and 
then you set up your FTTD mesh, which is, uh, I think, the most important step, but also the one with, with the most experience needed, because I think the CRD part, it's clear, it's easy, um, but to get the meshing right is important and difficult. You have, have to have experience there. Um, you set up maybe some dumps that you want to do, so your fields, what you want to record. You run the simulation and you do your post-processing and figure creation. But I think the best way is, I will quickly show it, a very simple example. Uh, it's one of the tutorials. Um, I hope you can read it. I, maybe I can increase this a little bit. No, I can't. But you can see here in the top part there are some uh, setups, as I said, some constants defined here. And then you have here the FTTT setup with your pulse, uh, which pulse you want to set up, your boundary conditions. Um, then here you can see I set up the mesh. Um, I, again, this is a tutorial that is also online, so you can have a closer look at it if you want to. The important part is these smooth mesh lines, that you have a smooth, uh, smooth mesh. Then down here is pretty much the, uh, the part where you set up your structure. So you can see I define a material, which is the Rogers material, substrate, and I define it as a box, which is just a cube, pretty much, for my substrate. And that's it already, so I have my substrate. And here I define a metal, which is going to be my trace, and then I have my MSL ports, which is doing the high, very high level, so doing the, the trace of the line, it's doing the excitation, it takes care of the voltage and current probes, and all that is included here. Of course, you have to read a little bit how this interface works, but then it's really one line. And again, because of all the tutorials, it's usually, oh, where did you do it? Ah, oh, there, and I can see how it works. That's how you do it usually. I set up some dumps. This is this part here, and then I uh, write the file and have my tool to view the structure, and then it, I run it. And here in the bottom part, I have only the plotting. So. This is a small filter. It's 90 lines of Python code with already lots of uh, documentation. And if you, if you just run this script, then you can see first off, you can see the structure. This is a, um, the tool to view it. Yeah, you can see here your line. And if you look from top, let me hide the Rogers material. And you can also see a little bit the mesh, how it is more dense for your for your line and a little bit less dense uh, in the surrounding. But you also have to make sure that you have enough lines in the free space for the wave. So at least 15 lines per wavelength um, is kind of the rule of thumb here. But where, where there's more detail, you need more, more lines. And if you close this one, then um, it will run. So you can see a few information here. So the time step is 0 0.2 roundabout picoseconds, a very small time step, of course. Um, the excitation is about 0 0.8 nanoseconds because it's a 7 gigahertz pulse. It's very short, of course. And then you can see that it's running. It should be around 40 seconds here. But you can see the excitation is about 5,000 time steps, so it's already done now. And so now the ener energy should go down. It has to, of course, dissipate somewhere. And once it's uh, dissipated, um, the simulation stops and OpenEMS will create a figure. So now it's uh, close to minus 50 dB, so the energy is very low now, and it's finished. Then you get the S parameters. Um, so you can see that, for example, here at 3.6 gigahertz, this filter is completely blocking everything. And if you use another tool, ParaView, then you can even visualize the, how that would look. So you see the wave uh, hitting this uh, stub and it's going to be reflected partially, of course, only. That's, and again, it repeats on the loop here. So that would what it would look like. So you can have really deep insight what is going on. This is, of course, a very simple example. No, not start again. No. Okay. Some more examples, maybe. This is a simple antenna, a patch antenna, very basic. You see the radiation pattern here in this blue, uh, no, this colorful ball here, showing which direction it's radiating. Uh, you can do the same thing in cylindrical coordinates. So you see it's, it's bent because it's uh, in cylindrical shape. Um, you can do helix antennas, for example. You have a metal base plate and just a wire wound it around, some substrate, maybe some... Uh, um, yeah, 
and then you get a pattern like this, or if that's not enough gain for your Wi-Fi antenna, you can do it 4x4, four four, and then you have uh, 16 elements, for example, and you have very high gain, high directivity uh, Wi-Fi antenna if you want. So you can, can simulate that. Or maybe an example, again, the reason why OpenEMS Open exists, because I wanted to do a magnetic resonance imaging antenna design. And so here you can see an example of very simple um, uh, loop coils um, to use for an MRI. So you can uh, create magnetic fields with those at uh, 300 megahertz in this case to, uh, to get MRI images. And what OpenEMS can do is, of course, for example, look at the SAR, so the specific absorption rate. So red or white means hot, so more energy is being absorbed by the tissue, and darker means less energy is absorbed. You can actually see um, that the, the skull bones here is darker because it's less conductive, so it absorbs less heat. While this, the skin is closer to the antenna, it absorbs more, or here even the, um, the spinal fluid is more conductive, so it has more, uh, absorbs more. You can even see the differences between the different um, gray matter and white matter of your, of your brain, for example. So you can, can do these um, simulations as well. But maybe for you, more ex interesting is also PCB antennas. Simple example here, this USB dongle from Texas Instrument, I think. Um, I modeled it after the spec uh, specifications. Here you can see the OpenEMS model. Of course, uh, all the PCB part is a bit sketchy. It's all the, only a metal plate here in my example. But what I could confirm is, for example, that this target frequency of Wi-Fi, that works. But it also showed very clearly that the matching of the antenna is highly dependent on the size of the PCB of pretty much everything. So it's important to do a simulation, in my opinion, because you will need a matching network. You see here one, because uh, you have to match your antenna. Otherwise, it will not work as good as it should be. And so simulations like this is important. And that brings me to the second part of this talk, which is interfacing. So what, is the, what do I mean by this? We have this electric magnetic solver, OpenEMS, for example. And you all know a lot of PCB editors, um, designers. And it would be nice to combine those, I think. So you have to have the capability to simulate trace uh, PCB antennas, to simulate filters, transmission lines, for example, like in this example from a spectrum analyzer, where you see a lot of filter here. It would be nice to just uh, put export it to OpenEMS, for example and do a simulation on it, does it work in the frequency I want? But the problem is that this link between these two worlds, electromagnetic simulation and uh, PCB simulation or PCB design, in my opinion, is uh, very weak, and that could be improved on. There are some tools that already do this or try to do this. Um, so the first one I want to introduce here is hype to math which is uh, quite a long time ago already. Um, that it was uh, developed and is still active supported. So it converge, uh, converges uh, the hyperlinks format, uh, which is a commercial format, um, into a script that OpenEMS can run. So whatever packages can export this format, you can use this tool to convert it to OpenEMS pretty much. There are also uh, a few examples with it, so you can see how it works. It's already shipped with OpenEMS, so if you download it, it's already included. There's this PCB R&D uh, editor, which is uh, also a PCB editor. Um, these guys are also working on a, an exporter to OpenEMS. So I will show that in a moment also. And then there's also a very young, very new um, project, PCB Model Gen, which uh, is a user that created this one, posted on the OpenEMS forum. Um, I haven't looked at it uh, too closely yet, but it looks very promising. The idea is to import or to convert KiCad uh, PCB files to use with OpenEMS. But again, maybe the KiCad guys should have a closer look at it and see how it works. And of course, I will also try to have a closer look at it. Some examples from these tools. For example, um, hype to mat This is um, a hairpin filter. Um, you can see already the exported model to OpenEMS. Um, you can see the results on the right. If you look at the mesh closely, you can see that here's a bit dense mesh here too, but here in the middle it could be a little bit denser, and so you can see that, well, the results look okay, but um, the frequency is, of course, okay, but 
it's uh, a little bit not sharp uh, so as it should be, I think. In the next example, it's uh, the same uh, example, but used PCB R&D to do the export. Um, the mesh is not shown, but I have had a look at the mesh, and that one looked very nice. And you can already see the difference, um, that it's, it's the same frequency, but it looks already a bit better. So you have very nice um, flat plateau there that looks very good. So it already works uh, to some extent. That is um, very good. But the ultimate goal, of course, the, the dream, let's say, would be to have the capability to design your, your PCB in KiCad or whatever favorite tool you want, maybe enrich it with some 3D models like housing or whatever you want, combine those into an open EMS uh, model, do your RF simulation, and from what you've learned there, maybe go back to your design, or maybe you first plug in a circuit simulation with Cooks or whatever circuit simulator you want to use, and maybe then go back to your design and somehow iterate through here to really get your, your device to do uh, what you want and to give it the best performance possible. Yeah, the project, project status. Um, so OpenEMS is around for 10 years now and it's quite mature, I would say. Um, it has a lot of advanced FTT features <coughs> like dispersive models, uh, cylindrical coordinates, um, and uh, human body models. I don't know if any other free software can have uh, the human body models included too. The human body models, of course, are not freely available, so you have to have a license uh, to, to have those. Um, but, for example, if you do research, that's usually not an issue. If you do commercial work, it's a little bit more difficult to get them, but if you do research, for example, public-funded research, it's usually not a problem to get them. Um, there's, of course, as in every free open source project, there's always something to do. Um, my to-do list, very high up, is to improve the documentation um, and to extend it also, to get the Python interface a little bit more finished um, and usable, and, of course, continue what I've just uh, talked about, this interfacing to other tools like EDA tools and CAD tools to get that working a little bit better. And, of course, always open for new features in FTTD or maybe improvements in terms of the speed of the engine. That's all, of course, uh, very nice. Any in any case, here's a little further reading. So a lot of um, pages you can look at. Uh, OpenEMS DE would be the first place to look at for to download the software, to get instructions how to install it. On Linux, it's pretty much instructions how to compile the source code. On Windows, it's just a zip file extracted, you're done. Um, the forum, if you have questions or want support, I try to always answer questions within 24 hours, something like this. Usually I get it done that fast, but yeah. But in any case, it's free, it's open source. Just download it, give it a try, run a tutorial, run an example. And with that, yeah, thank you for your attention. Okay, questions? Uh, I have one. Uh, what, would it, what would it take if I want to extract the full board? I have to label all the parts and, and run the extraction and mesh it, or how, how, how would it be the approach? So the question would be how to export the structure and what do no, you need? I want to extract the scattering matrix for a full board, for instance. I'm doing seal integrity analysis. I want to mm -hmm. all, all pins, I want to have mapped the, the relationship between so the question is, what do you have to do if you want to have a full board with all pins and everything exported and analyzed? Um, the first thing is, of course, to extract your, your model. That's clear. All the traces, for example, as polygons um, and substrates is easy. Then what you need to do is you have, for each pin, let's say you have to have a port. Um, and this port has to be, one has to be excited or the other has to be passive so that you have like S21, S31, S41 and so on. And then you have to excite all the other ones, like the port 2, and then you get port uh, S12 and 22 and so on. So you have to iterate through all of these ports. That's what you have to do. And if you have one port, that's one simulation. If you have two ports, that's already two simulations and so on. Um, of course, you can define, okay, I'm not interested in the excitation of that port, so I, you can keep it passive all the time. You can reduce it, but that's pretty much what you have to do. Export your structure and then put ports wherever you need them and uh, do the simulations. And then you can export a touchstone, for example, with all this information and run it in your circuit simulator, for example. 
Ja. Can it be misused for thermal simulation? Has it been used for thermal simulation? Uh, no. Um, I think it could be. Ex uh, the question was, uh, can you use it for thermal simulation? Um, it's not included, no. So you can calculate the SAR, so you would have the information how to heat up your structure, for example, but there is no thermal solver in included, no. No. Um, does the solver support uh, like lossy magnetic cores, like a ferrite core? Uh, there's a question is if it supports lossy materials like ferrite, yes. right? Uh, it supports losses, um, yes. Uh, you either by just uh, applying conductivity to the structure or by using dis the dispersive models. Ferrite um, is a different story because it's quite complicated. Um, if you don't have a hyster hysteresis, it's possible, which is nonlinear. So if it's a linear material, yes, you can do it. Um, so you have mat magnetic materials uh, with losses. Um, and you can, you of course, also use dispersive models for it, Drudo or Debye or anything like this. Um, but not with hyster hysteresis. That's not possible. Everything that's linear, yes. Everything that's nonlinear, no. No, back there is one. Yep, um, I'm not sure I understood your uh, comment regarding the uh, human models. You said uh -huh. they, you'd have to purchase them or something. Is that something as part of the problem? <coughs> like this is data sets which are outside? Or no, um, the human body models are not. Uh, the question is about the human body models, where to get them and what the, uh, if you can purchase them or if they are included. They are, of course, not included. Um, they, you have to get them from wherever you, wherever it exists. Um, so the Etihad Zurich, for example, has a lot of human body models. Um, and you can make a contract and NDA. I don't know what's required. Again, it's a long time ago. So that you can get them. And what OpenMS comes with is, for example, a tool that can convert these models, can read them and convert them into a model that OpenEMS can understand, pretty much a voxelized uh, HDF5 file that you can read, which you can create yourself if you want to. So you could create your own body model if you like. Um, but there's a tool to convert it. Um, if it's not included, that would not be allowed, no. You have to get them from what, uh, somewhere else. So the question, <coughs> yeah, the question is uh, if there is a visualization tool to cut uh, through your fields and your data and so on. Um, what I use is uh, this software, Paraview, which is also open source. Um, it uses VTK and has a Qt GUI. Um, you can do uh, millions of filters if you go up here. It's already, this is a warp filter and a calculator. So you have uh, a bun this list of filters that you can uh, so you can do everything that I, I think you can do everything what you want. This tool is very complicated, but for me it was clear I don't want to redo something that's already that nice. So this tool, it has its own learning curve for sure, but I'm pretty sure you can do everything you, your heart would desire, yeah. Uh, you can do everything like uh, the question is is there a more high level uh, interface to do arrays and phase shifting and stuff like this um, since it's a scripting interface it's very easy if you have one, ten have one antenna and you want an array you make one or two four loops with your antenna or your, your PCB for your antenna inside and then you have your array and if you want to have a phase shift for each of these arrays then in this loop you define a time delay for each and every port and then you have your phased uh, array pretty much you cannot do a phase in, F, in time domain because it's time domain, but you have a time shift which is translated pretty much for one frequency in a corresponding frequency uh, or a phase shift. Any other questions? Perhaps, uh, weird question, but I'm working on a wireless fencing system on your fence, so you, you hit somebody, and I wonder if can I use this tool to simulate uh, so how a signal would pro propagate from one person to the sword to a second person. So you are, quest the question is, wireless fencing, you mean if somebody walks through an EM no, signal? No, a, a sword and you try to hit somebody. Okay. And he has his body is uh, conducting. And could you use this tool to okay. simulate or help in... Uh, so the question is, if you have a wire, a RF sword, sort of, yes, and you yes. touch somebody with it, can you simulate that? Yeah. Okay, um, interesting question. Uh, 
Yes, I think so. It, it, it depends on the frequency of the signal. So um, FTTD is not very accurate for very low frequencies, so I don't know which frequency you are thinking about. Um, but if everything is very large, you can also go down with the frequency a little bit. Um, but it de highly depends on the frequency, of course. And including the entire body model with all, everything with the mesh, that's not going to be a fast simulation, let's say, like this. It's going to take a couple of hours to simulate, I guess. It depends. Does it also work for lightsabers? Lightsabers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, you, can, you can do optics with it, yes? Bitte? Again? Uh, how low can you get? How low you can get with the frequency? Um, I mean that p uh, depends on the size of the model. Um, you have to remember that uh, the time step depends on the mesh. The mesh depends on your structure. So if your structure is very detailed, the mesh is very fine, the time step is very small. And if you have a small time step and a very low frequency, low frequency means long pulse, and then you have to simulate very, very long. So that all depends on one another. <clears throat> if you, you can, of course, like this one, I used a, a pulse with 7 gigahertz bandwidth, so DC was included. But if you uh, would to analyze at that very low frequencies, uh, the resolution is not very good because you not have very much data there. You get some results, but mm, the accuracy is not as, as detailed, let's say. Okay, let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.